All right, a little quick video this morning, about to hit my chest. Um, you know, so some of the questions would be like, why uh, these WCW videos all of a sudden, Jim? Why uh, talk about a defunct 25 year, whatever, wrestling organization? Because WCW was a huge part of my childhood and I never forgot it. And somebody's gotta talk about WCW. You know, we're all about WWE and uh, Roman Reigns and Cody Rhodes and Seth Rollins whoa, 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 and all that stuff, right? We're all about today's current product. But you gotta remember, you know, you might be 20, I don't know, 22, 23 years old, and you might have not, not ever seen WCW, but this was a huge part of the history of pro wrestling. Hence, my interest voicing up the knowledge, because I lived through the WCW days, and I was a big fan. I was on board with WCW for years. But this is where the history of WCW, I have a PhD in WCW. I lived it, I breathed it, it was my jam. It was my thing. So we're going to talk about one of the biggest points of where WCW failed. Connecting with the young fans. Let me give you guys a perfect example. March 24th, 1991, Los Angeles Sports Arena, WrestleMania 7, WWF. This, uh, this is the big one. Uh, Sergeant Slaughter just turned heel, turned his back on America, right? Everybody hated him. He had to wear a bulletproof vest to the ring. They were, they were calling bomb threats to his house. They hated Sergeant Slaughter worse than anybody's ever been hated in the history of professional wrestling. Nobody had heat on him like Sarge. So you go to WrestleMania 7, and so the, the American hero, Hulk, defeats him after months of buildup, defeats him in Los Angeles at the sports arena on Figueroa, defeats him and wins the World Wrestling Federation Heavyweight Championship that night. Okay, so every little kid on the car ride home with their parents from WrestleMania, Dad, the Hulk won, the Hulk's so great. Dad, that was amazing that the Hulk won. I love the Hulk, right? And the little kids in the back of the car, because that's who pro wrestling is designed for, it's kids, really. They went home happy. They went home with a Hulk Hogan bear. They went home with a Hulk Hogan t-shirt. And they watched their hero win the WWF title versus the biggest bad guy in the history of pro wrestling. Smashed every pay-per-view record there was. That was WWF in the early 90s. The kids went home happy. And on the other side, WCW, where they failed. You go to November 93, the Battle Bowl tournament. Bunch of good guys in the tournament. But you decide to have the biggest butthead, the biggest bully, the biggest bad guy win your Battle Bowl tournament. And he was already the world champion. Obviously, they were setting up Flair and uh, Vader, Star K93, right? Flair took the belt off. But the point being, on that ride home in November of 93, when your bad guy, your biggest bad guy, left the arena after he won the Battle Bowl, I guarantee that little kid in the back of the car, instead of saying, yeah, Hulk, yeah, Hulk, yeah, Hulk, um, they were saying, Dad, do you think anyone will ever beat him? That was really bad that the bad guy won. And I'm, I'm speaking from a little kid's perspective about the whole thing. Think about it. They didn't go home with a Vader bear, a Vader t-shirt. They didn't go home happy that the heel won. You have to understand the time frame. In the early 90s, it was clear cut. It was good guy that everybody cheered for, and it was a bad guy that everybody booed and hated. And that's the way the wrestling was in the early 90s. And WCW made the decision to have their bad guy go over at most of the shows and beat the babyface in the main event. And send that little kid home in the back of the car completely disappointed. Like Great American Bash 92, uh, perfect example. Sting is the baby face champion, right? And, and you know, you have little kids fainting. Sting was over. You know, you have little kids painting their face like Sting, buying a Sting tee. And Sting's hot. Sting's a golden goose in 92. Flair's gone. And they decided to have the big bully, Vader, who all the little kids were scared of and hated, win the world title from him clean. And it's just... And I don't remember another pay-per-view. I don't think Sting got another shot at him until King and Cable. 
in December '92, Starcade. Uh, it's just, it's just the point being, is connection with the fans, and that's where WCW failed, was to send the little kids home happy at the end. You can't express how important that is to send the kid home happy and not disappointed that his hero just got defeated. You know, in the main event, I, I get it. Pro wrestling now, heels win all the time. It, it's it's not as clear cut now. Um, Roman Reigns won the series of WrestleMania, right? The big bad guy, he defeated Cody Rhodes in the main event of WrestleMania. Okay, and the fans were, they were okay. Nobody was too upset because they're used to heels winning now. Back then, heels did not win main event. You did not put the Macho Man over Hulk at WrestleMania 5. You did not put Andre over Hulk at WrestleMania 3. Uh, you just, you didn't do it. You did not have DiBiase beat Savage at WrestleMania 4 in the main event. You just, heels did not win main event world title matches. It just wasn't done. Maybe in WCW where they, they really didn't get the connection with the fans, they did it, but it was not done back then. You had your good guy win the last match, send the fans home happy. It's a simple philosophy. WCW failed on so many levels to connect with the audience. In fact, if you watch some of the early 90s WCW pay-per-views, it was an older crowd in the front row, probably got their tickets for free, and some of them would be, it was like old people, and they'd be sitting there in the front row reading their newspaper. It's just there was just no uh, connection, you know, at all, to see an old lady in the front row reading her newspaper at the wrestling matches. There's just no no interest in it at all to send kids home and this is your fan base the old lady in the front row reading a newspaper it's just it didn't make any sense it's just i don't know if atlanta was just a weird place i mean if you watch some of those old braves games you know the, the fans in the front row were so bored you know watching the braves win every day that they would be bored out their mind because that's all the braves did in the 90s was win and i'm not saying nothing bad on atlanta or the braves but the fans were bored the fans were bored at the WCW shows as well. You know, it just, it made zero sense what they were doing back then. They just did not have a clue. Their presentation on the ring was poor. Uh, it was like done in a dark and dingy arena. The lighting was terrible. Uh, it just, it was, it was gross. The ring was dirty. And the thing was, you had so much talent in that ring the presentation on the show did not, and the lighting did not get cleaned up until Bischoff brought it in. And he brought a real production company in. They lit the arena up. The ring looked great with the WCW logo, and each pay per view would have the logo in the center. And it was a sharp presentation, but it did not happen in the early 90s time frame. It was dark and dingy, and old lady in the front reading her newspaper, and little kids going home because WCW always let the bad guys win at the main event. I can remember specifically at Bash at the Beach 94. That was the first WCW pay-per-view that I, I had ordered. So we're sitting there watching it and there's six matches. Five of the heels won that day. And I'm sitting there with my dad, who's a casual wrestling fan, and he goes, Vince, if a good guy doesn't win this last match, who was the Hulk, I'm never ordering a, another WCW pay-per-view again. And I, I understood where he was coming from. He's like, my dad's like, every single bad guy has won every single match on this pay-per-view. And that's coming from a casual wrestling fan who was probably used to the WWF presentation where uh, the good guys actually won some of the matches and won the main events. It just, it didn't make any sense when you're watching Bash of the Beach 94. Yeah, I know the Smash pay-per-view records. Yeah, I know Hogan and Flair, you know, July 17, 94. I, I get it in Orlando. I get it that the Smash records, five heels win six matches. It's just, they just, it just doesn't make sense the way that they did this and did not cater to the fans. You know, I, I don't know. I, it's kind of like uh, I was at WrestleMania 16 in Anaheim in the year 2000, and they made the decision to have Triple H win the main event. That was the first time a heel ever went over in the main event, and you know what happened? The fans got pissed really pissed. They started throwing shit. I got hit in the head with a battery. I got hit in the head with a piece of ice. It was just dumb the way that they did that. But WWF wasn't notorious for it. WCW was notorious for always putting their heel over in the main event. Or 
and no offense, but 92, 93, you had your, your Japanese wrestlers that nobody knew, that your casual fan didn't knew, and they were main event and win the Battle Bowls, and no one had ever heard of these guys. And the product was boring. During the Bill Watts days, it was stale. And Bill Watts claimed that, you know, they were drawing all kinds of excess fans and they were cutting a loss and this and that. I'm not really sure because if you're asking me, in 92 when I was watching, would I rather watch the Ultimate Warrior and Savage doing the Mega Maniacs or would I rather watch Eric Watts and Barry Windham lay on the mat for a half hour? I mean, I'm turning on for uh, entertainment purposes and the presentation behind W. Basically back then, uh, if WCW was on at the same time as WWF, W. WF was going on because of coolness, really, and the look on it. It was just a much cooler show to watch. The WCW presentation uh, just was not very sharp, and they did not get, they had so much talent in 92, they did not really get those guys over. Dustin Rose didn't become a star, you know, until he left and became Gold Dust. I mean, they had, uh, yeah, I know, everyone goes on about the Dangerous Alliance and this and that really wasn't that entertaining Sting squadron in the war games. It wasn't that spectacular of a cage match. I mean, they had Rick Rude there. Yeah, he did pretty good and became the champion, but I felt like Rick Rude was much more entertaining than WWF. Yeah, he went to WCW and he, you know, got a haircut and, he, you know, he was mean as hell and did all the stuff. But it was still more entertaining in WWF, working with Jake the Snake and Rowdy Piper. Was still a more entertaining time. That was the most entertaining that Rick Rude had ever been um, in his career. It's just I'm looking at that time frame and I'm looking at 92, 93 WCW. It just was not, it was not clicking. It, it wasn't. Like if you watch Great American Bash 92 today on the WWE Network, you're going to see a tag team tournament. And I, I, I have all the respect in the world for Terry Gordy and, uh, team with Steve Williams. I have so much respect for them as wrestlers, but as far as charisma and entertainment go, uh, they should not have won that tournament. I mean, a big tag team tournament, the Great American Bash 92, literally it's 10, 15 matches of a lot of Japanese wrestlers you've never heard of. And this is Bill Watts' influence. A lot of matches that you're never going to watch for a second time. A poorly lit building which really makes the show look bad. And you could visibly hear um, Jesse the Body bored to tears on commentary because this is Jesse the Body. I mean, he's been at WrestleMania with Hulk and Andre with 100,000 people, and he's watching these Japanese wrestlers that, you know, no one's ever heard of in an arena with 4,000 people, in a dark arena with 4,000 people, just quiet, because they're watching an influx of boring Japanese wrestling. And... It just, it, it did not click. And then your world champion Sting, who all the kids are getting behind, they just took the belt off him by Vader. And you're watching, yeah, Terry Gordy and Steve Williams, they were great in Japan. As far as the WW, or as far as the WCW side go, they just, they, they weren't Roman Reigns. They weren't Cody Rose. They weren't Seth Rollins. They weren't that entertaining to watch in, in the match. And tremendous wrestlers. Like, probably one of the most devastating tag teams I've ever seen. I mean, they were killers in the ring, but they were not that entertaining. So if you watch a pay-per-view like the Great American Bash 92, I, I challenge you to go watch that pay-per-view today and come back and tell me what you think about it. Watch it for the full three hours. You're gonna see some great on the mat wrestling, but as far as the entertainment value behind it, yikes. Not, not anything that you're gonna brag about ever seeing. I personally liked the Great American Bash 92, and I would, when I was a kid, I would, I would have, I had the VHS tape, and I would show all my friends this, and man, by the second or third match, they would just be tapped out, and then usually the conversation with my friends at the time, hey, let's put the, let's put the match on where Foley falls off, or hey, let's put the Undertaker on, or hey, let's watch some Stone Cold versus McMahon, and that was the common, hey, let's watch some old Hulk matches, hey, let's watch some Shawn Michaels, Randy Savage, entertaining stuff, let's watch some Brad Hart, you know, Kurt Angle stuff not three hours on the Great American Bash 92 where you have Japanese wrestlers laid on the mat for three hours. That's not all that entertaining for the casual fan. It's just the, the truth, the reality, 
So WCW failed its fans, you know, bringing in um, non-wrestling people to do um, these pay-per-views and stuff. And Bill Watts, his stuff was just outdated. His methods were outdated. The way he'd run his pay-per-views were outdated. It was a very boring product to watch. So that's pretty much my deal on, on how WCW failed its fans. I hope you enjoyed this. I'm going to try to do some more of these videos. I enjoy talking about the old stuff with you guys. You guys have a good day. Thank you.